Good morning, everybody. Uh, so, sadly, the time has come to do the last garden tour of the year of 2020. Um, our temperatures right now, I'm in zone 7A, if you don't know. Um, our temperatures are now cold. Um, so last night was the first night that was in the 40s. And it's only going to be in the 40s from here on out. Um, so I'm going to give you one last tour, one last look around the garden. Uh, it has grown and progressed immensely over these last few months. And I'm really, really excited. Um, I'm already planning my garden for next year. So let's start. So I'm going to pull you down. So this is the west side of the garden um, so going this way we've got the hydrangea bushes um, this one that and that one there I'm going to move that guy next year and I'm gonna put him out here a little bit I've been spray painting some stuff right there uh, but yeah they've not put on any flowers this year um, because basically when I got them they were like sticks um, and here you can see the walnuts I've been collecting. So the fern, you can see how much the fern has grown. I mean, not immensely, but when I put it in the ground, it had uh, one panicle on it. Uh, here you can see the coleus. I'll just show you all the coleus real quick. So these, that, that one, those over there, that guy and this coleus <clears throat> they've all I put those in the ground like a month and a half ago and they were just cuttings so I'm pretty impressed with how big they've gotten I have already pulled most of the sweet potato vine up because it was basically dead uh, the bugs had gotten to it really really bad so it looked really bad the pineapple sage has done really well the basil uh, the begonias I've done really good back here. The lemon balm I put back here not too long ago is doing well. The sedum is on its last leg. Uh, got full of its fall color. Beautiful sedum. The... Uh, what are these? Cosmos. They've got buds on them. They look like they're about to open. So maybe I'll get some color out of these before um, everything gets, everything dies. Uh, right here, oh, sorry, my shadow. We've got the mints and the bee balm. And this is a little flower. This is, has like little pom-pom pink, little pom-pom flowers in the spring. My hostas look really awful right now, but that's okay. The zinnias, um, as you can see, the zinnias have just, they do really well in my area because we're hot and humid environment. The morning, or the marigolds, um, they're looking a little sad, but they're beautiful. I came out here yesterday and I cut a bunch of the flowers because I like to save them for projects. Um, they save really well and uh, you can take... Take an old flower head in the spring and put it outside and it will grow a plant for you. Uh, the pepper plants. Um, I have gotten quite a few peppers off them throughout the year, so they've done really well. Over here, we've got the artemisia plant. Oh, there's a bee. And then you can see here, this thing fell. Uh, because it has been raining really hard the past few days. The nasteriums have done well. Beautiful all year long. One of the first things to bloom and still going strong. Look at the color on that. That's just beautiful. Trixie! So let's go this way. And I'll show you the teepee. So the teepee. Very nice very full it was been full all year looked really good um so here you can see the echinacea it's got a spider living underneath the bloom 
right on the bloom stalk. Uh, but the echinacea, hopefully it flowers. Um, the gallardias, still, still flowering strong. Um, the sweet, uh, the, what is this called? The, uh, black-eyed Susan vine looks really beautiful. Uh, the wandering dude has gotten so big since I put it out here. And the mom's looking beautiful. Strawberries. Lavender, fennel, these zinnias, they look tired. They look ready to get taken out. This zinnia. Over here, we've got some yarrow. We've got some Japanese forget-me-not, cooper ice plant. We've got one, two foxgloves. Those will flower next year. Um, and then we've got some other... These are blue enchantments, all these right here. And some calendula, jalapeno, some carrots down in there. They're actually, I planted those um, a month ago and they've tripled in size. Patchouli, catnip, more calendula, more zinnias, um, cypress vine. And over here we got more cypress vine, more coleus, and then here we've got the blue chiffon rose of Sharon I planted right here. Um, it's gonna get really big. Got a bunch of buds on it right now. Um, and then here we've got a garnet king crepe myrtle, and then right here we've got a blue point juniper tree um, okay and so let me show you the vegetable garden over here real quick and then we'll go to the front so here's the arch I put this from the front yard back here because um, the windstorms y'all hear those walnuts falling the windstorm kept knocking it down so I just put it back here um, and that that morning glory's already grabbed onto it um, you can see I tore out the tomatoes. I harvested a bunch of them. Um, we got the garden sage, Russian sage, pink lavender, thyme, oregano, yarrow, yarrow, and white sage. <laughs> and then over here, we've got sweet marjoram, St. John's wort, and mugwort. So, let's open this greenhouse up because it looks like it's warm in there. Oh yeah, it's hot in there. We will just open this a tad bit because I don't want to. I mean, it's a good temperature in there right now. It's uh, let's check it actually. Oh, it smells like jasmine in here. Mm, look at the jasmine flowers, you guys. Yeah, it smells. You could smell that. Oh, no, it looks like I've got spider mites on my jasmine. Oh, man. How disappointing. Oh, hopefully I can save it. I know they're usually when you have spider mites, though, there's little to no hope for your plant but the good thing is look I've got a whole new harvest of jasmine I had stopped getting flowers off this plant about a month ago okay so our temperature in here is 80 about 85 degrees feels good so my plants will stay nice and alive So that's exciting because it's about 50 outside right now and it's about 80 in the in the greenhouse so I don't want to disrupt let's keep that closed okay so let's go to the front yard oh the peonies look really sad right now 
uh, the azalea. You guys, I've got to show you this. Uh, so here we've got a cabbage plant that I planted. It's doing very well. There's another one there. But look at this radish. <laughs> I've just let this go to see what it does because I, you know, experiments. Uh, but look how big it is, you guys. It's like a freaking giant root. It's amazing. I'm just going to let those grow because I'm not eating them. Um, so the asters. Uh, looking sad. The lilac. The wisteria, the ivy. Ooh, the honeysuckle. Let's pick those. I've got honeysuckle. Uh, Mark is going to take that um, tree to his house today. Pick these honeysuckles so I can save them. Because these honeysuckles dry out beautifully. So, good to save. Uh, and as you can see, I took the watermelon, I pulled the watermelons up. So there's all the, I put them there to dry. Um, yeah, I got about 20 watermelons off of the vines and about three of them were viable. Uh, and as you can see, there was a, we had a bad windstorm uh, last week and it knocked and cracked uh, most of the purple peonies but and so I just you know I cut them all down because the purple ones were here believe it or not it's only like four or five stems those that giant thing of peony or not peonies I'm sorry dahlias um that giant thing of dahlias was just one plant so you can see here in the center these are all the purple ones and then these ones are the ones I planted this spring the purple or the really pretty pink ones they're butted up all over the place hopefully those open before it gets too cold but as you can see they're like crawling all over the place I'm gonna have to get some stakes and then the white dahlias that I planted also this spring um, are blooming looking beautiful and we I managed to salvage a few of the purple ones so they weren't all a total loss but I got a beautiful show out of them this year, and that's all I really wanted. The hibiscus, or not um, hibiscus, yeah, hibiscus tree, I'm sorry. Hibiscus tree has doubled in size since I put it in the spring. Very nice. See, um, the watermelons make, make good food for the local bees. And then my Japanese cherry tree has got all these little berries on it. Cute. And the marigolds and the pentas over there. And then, last thing, uh, as you can see, I pulled out the morning glories because, like I said, they just kept falling over. So, um, you can see the holly, the soft touch holly, has put on a lot of growth. The rose has put on a ton of growth. Um, and the rosemary, I'm actually, this, uh, holly, this holly is doing really well. But yeah, actually doing this uh, tour today, this last garden walkthrough, because I'm going to be cutting most of it down today. Because it, like I said, is starting to stay cold and be cold. So things are just naturally going to start dying. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this gardening season uh, and I really look forward to next year's garden. I will be showing you throughout the winter months, I'll be showing you my seed collection. We will be going through my apothecary and looking at my herbs to see what I need more of, see what I need less of, see what I need to clean out. So if you're interested in those things, please keep on watching and I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one bye good morning everyone so today is October 1st and I know this is at the end of the um, garden tour the last garden tour of the year but this morning is I had to wait for today because they weren't up yesterday but what I'm talking about is a certain type of morning glory 
These are the seeds. They're called Blue Dream Morning Glories. And I'll show you what they look like. This is the first one that's popped up so far, but they are the most intense blue. See, they, they don't even look true to color on camera. They look a little bit more purple. In real life, they are like a sky blue with a yellow throat. Um, I'll try to get a picture of it uh, and put it on my Instagram, which is at the Hollow Grove Apothecaries. Uh, and you can see the actual true blue color of this because it it's disappointing that it's not showing up true to color. Um, but this plant is very special. Uh, it holds a compound called LSA. Well, the seeds do. The seeds hold a compound called LSA, which is the cousin to LSD. And like LSD, these seeds, if you chew them... Or you can make a tea from them. I'm not suggesting you do. Please don't. Um, but they will make you trip like you are on a psychedelic. But what they will also do to you is will make you crap your pants. And they will make you throw up. Because they activate your stomach muscles. Um, and if you've ever taken, taken things that you have to um, first puke or something like that to feel the effects. This is one of those things. You will not get high unless you puke or poop. <laughs> so I don't advise anyone taking these or, or trying this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw this little tidbit in there because they just popped up this morning. They usually pop up, they're, they're usually the last flower to actually bloom. Um, and this is what the the leaves look like. They are lighter green than the other ones. So like regular morning glory and then the lightest the lightest green one down here is the uh, blue dream. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that little flower. Hope you enjoyed the video.